And now, for this week's State of Trade in Star Citizen. 3.7 has been pushed alive and sees the same economy as 3.6. However, there are changes that affect the landscape of the economy. 3.7 introduces FPS mineables, allowing players to make respectable profits with little risk. The rental system has also come online, allowing players tethered to starter ships to quickly access mid-tier haulers. The Pirate Caterpillar is now also permanently for sale. This is the first time the Premier Hauler has been for sale since the economic improvements of 3.6. The Ship Showdown winner has become an increasingly attractive purchase, and new owners are currently flooding the trade lanes to carve out their profits in a strong economy. The RSI Mantis has also been introduced. With its ability to pull a ship from Quantum, or prevent a ship from jumping, pirates have a new and fearsome tool in their arsenal. Organized piracy has already claimed several million credits in lost cargo this week alone. The increase in organization and new capabilities has sent a clear message. If you value your cargo, make sure it's protected. And now for market trends. With the progress wipe of 3.7, all commodities briefly return to their base prices. The metals market sees a continuing trend of Acrisium being wiped out in the Crusader system with prices soaring as high as 24.84, up from its base price of 22.5. Deposits on Lyria are still easier to obtain and hover at an average of only 22.6. Gold follows the same trend, with Daymar deposits rising as high as 5.88, up from a base price of 5.4 UEC. Gold traders are advised to migrate to Magda and Aberdeen for plentiful stock and better pricing. Titanium follows a similar pattern with Ariel deposits sitting at a base price of 7.10. However, prices at Tram and Myers have climbed as high as 7.99 UEC. It is not advised to trade titanium from Crusader at this time. Aluminum returns to 1.11 UEC and sees no change. Tungsten also returns to a base price of 3.55 and sees no change. Legal Vice sees a minor uptick in movement. Stims have risen as high as 3.03, up from their base price of 2.8. Distilled spirits are as high as 4.73, up from a base price of 4.20. The unusual rise can be attributed to new traders getting a feel for market commodities. Illicit goods see some changes, as a few people have switched to hauling Altrusha Toxin in favor of Widow or Neon. Toxin itself has a stronger demand, and movement on the narcotic is starting to show. Gases see changes as well. Astatine continues to be a scarce commodity in Crusader, with a surging price of up to 7.91, up from its base price of 7 UEC. Its sell price has also fallen off considerably in some places, as Grim Hex, Levski, and Port Olisar have reported prices as low as 8.1 during peak saturation. Full callers of Astatine are advised to trade at Lorville or Area 18 to ease congestion during peak trading hours. Chlorine has surged in popularity as new traders take advantage of its low buy-in. The gas rose to 1.4 in some locations, up from its base price of 1.3. Deacon's research has also experienced falling demand, as its sell price sunk to 1.65, down from its base sell price of 1.7 due to its close proximity to suppliers. Fluorine has also seen a major uptick in trade. While it has consistently stayed at a base price of 2.35, it has had decreasing demand at Deacon's research. The price at Deacon's has sunk as low as 2.66 UEC, down from a usual sell price of 2.95. At times, the outpost has actually filled its demand on fluorine, and traders have been forced to take their hauls elsewhere. Traders are advised to sell at Port Olisar or Hicks Research on Selen for stronger demand and better profits. Iodine also sees a minor falloff in demand as Deacon's is flooded with the cheap gas, with a minor drop in sell price of 0.43, down from its usual 0.45. Hydrogen sees little change, with a notable demand drop-off at R&R True L1, with its sell price dropping to 1.09 at times, down from its usual of 1.12. Minerals continue to be a major source of profit. Laronite dominates the market, and more caterpillars flooding into Ariel means that there is less of a highly sought-after commodity to go around. The price of Laronite rose as high as 27.73, with even off-hours seeing prices in the 25 to 26 range. Deposits on Selen are wiped out as short-distance haulers poach Crusader's meager supply. Diamond also sees a large increase in movement. Its volatile pricing has mostly affected sell locations. Port Olisar sees the most saturation, with an abysmal sell price of 6.66, 6 
across most servers, far below a base sell price of 7.35. Grim Hex sees similar pricing. Barrel sees a minor increase in trade as well, with its buy price from Kudra Ore nudging towards 4.07, up from 4.05. Court stays unchanged, except for deposits at Levski, which rose as high as 1.37, up from its base price of 1.25. Corundum sees no notable change. Medical supplies are seeing major movement once again with new traders. Prices rose to 16.55, up from a base price of 15.75. The sell price fell off at Lorville as well, dipping as low as 18.96, down from 19.25. Scrap has surged once again in popularity, as new traders take advantage of its easy buy-in and easier routes. Prices at Grim Hex and R&R True L1 rose to 1.53, up from its usual price of 1.35. Processed food and agricultural supplies see no changes. And now, for next week's forecast. There will be a surge of trading as the rental system makes hauling an easier prospect for players. With that in mind, trading will continue to be heaviest in the Crusader system as they get their bearings. Expect lower profits on Iodine, Fluorine, and Chlorine on Yela. Astatine and Eda will see the occasional price hike. Illicit goods will see a brief market rise before returning to being oversaturated with product. Laronite will become increasingly scarce as more traders reach amounts required to move it. Ariel will see increased pirate activity. And now, for this week's trading tip. Whether through exploiting or legitimate boarding, stowaways are a common sight in Star Citizen. Before leaving the safety of an armistice zone, lift off of the pad or ground and check your ship comms via Mobiglass to see if you have any unwanted guests. Be advised that this method does not always work. An alternative and guaranteed method is to have an escort scan your ship before leaving Armistice. If you do have a stowaway, simply land illegally to four-store your ship and try again. If at an outpost, consider bringing your escort aboard to help forcibly negotiate. That's it for this week's State of Trade. Until next time, keep on trucking.